Hello and welcome back. We have a new guest. I'm Andrew. Hi. That's Andrew. <laughs> Yes, we have a special guest, Andrew Barth. Yep. Andrew Barth. He is the reason, I believe, that I was in Project Egress. Remember that? It was pretty cool. It was pretty fun. It was pretty fun. And he's an engineering student in Illinois. Yep, at Bradley University. You might know I'm in Wisconsin, Illinois, Wisconsin. Pretty close. <laughs> so he made the drive up, and we're hanging out today. And I wanted to do a little interview, ask a little more about him. Remember, I do this every time someone comes to visit, so... That's that's what's going on. Uh, so, Andrew, you want to tell us a little about yourself? Uh, sure. So, uh, I grew up in Illinois. I'm a huge nerd, as you can probably tell by me being here. Um, I've liked aviation and space and all that kind of stuff for as long as I can remember. Um, my dad was a private pilot back in the 80s, and so he kind of instilled that on me. And so I have always wanted to do space-related stuff, and I guess that's where Project Egress comes in. I started making friends with Ryan Nagata, the replica builder, uh, a little over a year ago now. He put me in contact with Adam and the Smithsonian, and that got this whole thing rolling. On the side, I also do other fun projects like jet engines, hmm. uh, if you want to see that. Yeah. You built a jet engine. Building a jet engine. Building, yeah. Not quite running yet, but it's got some fun bits on it. It spins, which is real nice. Ooh. There's a leaf in there. <laughs> <laughs> the original version of the jet engine I made entirely by, entirely by myself. Um, I made all the little compressors and turbines and welded all the stainless. This is still a lot of the original stuff, but this part actually was machined by uh, John Saunders over at NYC CNC. The rest of it I made, though, except for these screws. Looks pretty intense. Yeah, it's, so it's you said it doesn't run? It does not run yet. It does not run? But I haven't tested it with this new stuff on the front. Ah. The first version had a really awful cast intake and a really awful compressor. Mm. And I'm not surprised it didn't run. Yeah. <laughs> it barely moved any air. But with machine uh, stuff, it should be better. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, at least less. I, I know I would not want to cast anything that would spin that fast. <laughs> Because well, I would die. <laughs> it was just the intake that was cast. This was machine. Oh, okay. So, that yeah. makes yeah, that makes sense. I was I was gonna cast it. <laughs> I was like, first of all, this is not working out very well, and then second of all, no, that sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> it's uh, just brittle and probably not yeah. gonna be balanced. We could yeah. spin that full 20, of sand, twenty thousand RPM, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so 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 you said your dad was a pilot. That's why you got into aviation. Yeah. So my dad is also a huge nerd. Big surprise. When he was 18, he drove down to Florida from Morton, Illinois, mm. and uh, watched Apollo 13 lift off in person. Wow. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty intense. awesome. Yeah. Um, so I'm a little jealous that he got to do that, but also I wasn't alive. So that's understandable. Small details. <laughs> yeah. It's just time um, travel. Yeah. Yeah, no big deal. So he, he uh, has always had that interest, and he uh, allowed me to kind of explore aviation and all that on my own. Hmm, that's pretty um, cool. So, was, yeah. so is that what got you into engineering? I'd say, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. One of my earliest memories is in Wichita, Kansas, seeing a B-2 bomber fly over me oh, on that approach would be to cool. landing. So that's that's probably a lot of it as well. Yeah? So there you go. Get your kids out and looking at cool stuff. Yeah. Expose them to nerd stuff if you want nerds. Yeah. Expose them to other stuff if you want boring normal people. <laughs> I don't understand normal people. I don't either. A while ago, I know we talked about King of Random. Mm. Um, his metal melt, metal melter thing. Oh yeah, the spot welder thing. Yeah, I made one of those a long time ago. Um, Did that work? It looked like a death trap. <laughs> it vaporizes <laughs> pennies. Let me tell oh, you. Oh, interesting. Pennies, if you uh, yeah, yeah, if you touch them together on a penny, it just kind of flashes blue and then disappears. <laughs> And splatters oh. on you, so it's it's real good. That that sounds great to breathe. It is it is amazing, yeah. That is fantastic. Um, he brought me something cool. I'm gonna go grab it. Hold on. This big honking thing is a brick, twenty pounds of brass. Do you know what kind of brass? Or just I probably, have no idea. Probably leaded brass. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's probably like a it's, yellow brass. It's heavy. I know that. Whatever it is, it's gonna be cool looking. Yeah. So. Er, in the future, maybe I'll see how quickly I can melt 20 pounds of brass. <laughs> that sounds like a fun video and one of my gigantic new crucibles that I haven't tried yet. Oh, yeah. A couple of huge ones. <laughs> so, 
That's pretty awesome. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. So you said, so you're an engineering student, mm-hmm. but after that you're going to go, you want to go into aviation engineering? Yeah, I'd like to go into something aerospace related, either rockets yeah. or airplanes. That would be cool. Yeah. Ro- rockets sound yeah. cool. You've yeah. been following SpaceX? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Pretty pretty soon they're going to, hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll have the Starship flying. Yeah. That would be pretty awesome. I watched, uh, I think it was ULA launched the Starship for... Oh, the, the Starliner or whatever? The Starliner. Yeah. Starship, not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Starliner. The the um, flying and now falling back to Earth. Yeah. After a minor oops. Oh yeah. I was kinda half asleep yeah. at that point, so I'd, it was just after launch I'd kinda tuned out and then I heard they missed the the thing, the the orbital burn. I was like yeah. what? Yeah, missed the orbital was... burn and now they're like out of gas or something. <laughs> and it's like it's like they had me designing the thing. <laughs> like that happened all the time when I played Kerbal Space Program. Get into orbit and like, wait. I'm out of gas. <laughs> Whoops. And I can't get back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jebediah. You're going to die. No, no. Here's what you do. You, you make the guy get out yeah, and, then- and push <laughs> with, his, with, his, with his thrusters. Yeah. You get him in the front just have him push the thing slower. And if he runs out of fuel, get back in, get back out. He has a full tank. It doesn't deplete the monopropellant on the thing. It was a glitch. Oh, really? It's an exploit. Yeah. You can you that. can get in and out infinite times and always have a full full pack full of monopropellant. <laughs> so awesome. you can really push that thing far. So there so there you go. If you make me design your spaceship, you might have to get out and push. <laughs> so get ready for that. Yeah, oh that's a great game. Two point is coming. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, excited. That's gonna be that's awesome. So cool. Inner like interplanetary and or inner interstellar interstellar travel. And the graphics look pretty awesome. Yeah. New fire. I never even made it to to Elu. <laughs> I, I would get like I haven't Jewel and like hit all the moons. And like ah, eh, kind of bored with this now. It's taken me like two days to design a whole starship. <laughs> like I I have other things to do in my life. <laughs> what am I doing? Having fun. That's what I'm doing. So uh, your dad's a pilot, kind of a nerd. You're kind of a nerd. Is that like a family thing? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a bunch um, of people like doing cool stuff. Yeah, my my oldest sister is a librarian. Has mm. been since she was real young. So that's that's, um, that's old school nerd. Yeah, uh, my sibling is an artist. They're really good. So mm. that's pretty awesome. That is awesome. That's, I used to do art a lot of yeah. art long time ago in high school. I almost went to an art school. I almost went for automotive design uh, at Academy. Was it something? I don't even remember. It's in Detroit. Mm. Really glad I didn't because my junior year. The economy collapsed, and all the car companies went bankrupt. Oh yeah! So I really dodged a bullet there. <laughs> oof. Yeah, oof! That would have that would have been rough. So you, uh, how if you're into all this interesting stuff, uh, why are you listening to me? Seems like you'd be more the expert here. Oh, I mean, no, I no. still don't know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> I mean, like this is. May, maybe it will turn into a workable jet engine, but it's made of garbage. It's cooler than um, anything I've built. <laughs> well, I don't have this anything is cooler machined. than anything I've, I've built so far either, um, except maybe the hatch. Like I, I feel completely out of my depth doing all this stuff. Yeah. Like, no, that that's where you got to be. Yeah, just, yeah, that's where I'm learning. Always be outside of the limit. <laughs> People like Adam was asking me stuff, and Jen asking me my opinion on the things on the hatch. I was like. Oops. <laughs> Maybe they don't have any ideas. They're yeah. looking for help. Yeah, I'm like, I all right. In my opinion, that's what you do. You you always push beyond what's possible. Don't worry about it screwing up, because it's gonna screw up. It's not gonna work. Like you you don't know what you're doing. Do it anyway. <laughs> Maybe it works, and you'll be shocked. Yeah, and it'll be great. And if it doesn't work, try something else. That's how you figure stuff out. Like look around. You you've seen all my videos, right? Every single one. Don't go and watch them. Please don't. Those earlier ones kind of embarrassment. But at no point, here's a secret, at no point was I confident it was going to work. Never. <laughs> mm. This new furnace I'm building, it's like the third one that I'm building. I don't think it's going to work. It might. It might. If it Who works, knows? that's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, it'll be, it'll be totally awesome. Same for, that, same for that jet engine. If it doesn't work, it looks cool. It already doesn't work. So, I mean, like, yeah. if it uh, eventually does work, then I'm like, oh. Yeah, the only thing you can lose uh, are your fingers when it blows up. <laughs> I, I do have like a double walled steel sheet. Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> and I, yeah, that's a good plan. Yeah. So Project Egress, you kind of told us how you got into that through friends with Ryan. Mm-hmm. He's got an Instagram, I think. I'll put that on a link. Yeah, I follow him. Real neat. Um, could you believe that you ended up doing something in the Smithsonian? Nah. No. no? Nope. I had no uh, clue what was going on when you were emailing <laughs> me at first. I'm like. This has got to be a scam, right? 
That's what John thought? Yeah. John Saunders, um, he mentioned this in the video. He's like, this is this has got to be a load of bull honky. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's, there's no way this is real. Because um, especially Jen's email is not an official ad yeah. thing. It's like a... Yeah, eventually when he started looking at the drawings that I had made, he's like, oh, this is not a scam. This is like, actually, there's thought put into this. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> Well, I got on like, similar. well, I'll just... I mean, it's cool looking. I'll just make it anyway. I don't care. I, I got no skin in this game. But yeah, no, I was totally like, this is a scam. And then I was thinking, they know I'm just a dude in a garage, right? I'm, Absolutely. I'm, I'm not like, I don't have a machine shop. All my crap is wood that's duct taped together. They really think I can do this? <laughs> I mean, I don't have a machine shop. Yeah? I didn't make any. Oh, I printed a couple of the parts, but not really. Yeah, I, w- I was like, I was really confused. Because I get, I get emails like all the time. And they're mostly, like, really poorly Google translated from a Chinese company wanting to sell me workshop lights. Mm -hmm. Or wanting to give me workshop lights to give them free advertisement. You might take them up on it. Yeah, I got, I got, I have (laughs) rapidly collapsing lighting in here. Uh, I was like, no, thank you. I can buy my crappy Chinese lights off Amazon like a normal person. Thank you very much. And, yeah, I I ignore, like, 100% of them because I expect them all to be scams. But this was... It was weird. Like, Smithsonian? Like, that's yeah, that's straight-up Nigerian prince email. <laughs> you know, like, I, I don't know what to think of that. But it worked. Yeah. I, I made the thing. I still got the pattern over there. I might yeah, make a cool. bunch more. Maybe I'll make one in brass. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Make one in brass, make some other space stuff in brass. I'm, I'm going to need handles to get in and out of this junker van if I ever get the thing built. So there. I'll have spaceship handles made out of mystery brass the best kind yeah it sounds like a good plan to me i think i'm totally gonna do that (laughs) in 2034 when i finally get to that part of the van project so have you 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 had a couple cast parts did you cast them yeah yes uh wait on the on your first jet engine on the jet engine yes i thought you were talking about the hatch still um yeah so i played around with casting bits of compressor and then quickly realized that was not going to mm. work. I did like a lost PLA casting mm. thing in an open faced, uh, <laughs> Oh, well it was, it was top notch. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah. That would work fantastic. And they're real thin blades. Yeah. So it filled in partially and I pulled it out. And I was like, Oh yeah, no, no. <laughs> um, and so eventually I abandoned the casting of the compressor. Cause I also thought there's no way I can get this. So that doesn't fly apart immediately. Mm. Um, I just machined that, but the intake, um, shroud kind of thing that goes around it mm. i did cast and i actually used that for the first version interesting um and you you worked at a foundry right you interned yeah I, a, I, I interned at a foundry in nice Peoria. um and that I got was to see. after you saw my videos or yeah, before during during <laughs> i had started to see yours and like king of random and all that mm. um beforehand and i started building a um like the mini metal foundry thing mm. Um, and it was awful, but it worked enough for aluminum. It does work enough for aluminum. Yeah. And I, I uh, recently, with a new burner that I mm. built based off of your other burner thing. Oh, yeah? Um, it didn't explode? It. Yeah, it didn't. <laughs> wow. Um, I know. I had it kind of like resting on bricks because pieces aren't welded. It's, it's yeah. like top notch. It's not, um, mine, mine's just band clamped to a piece of angle <laughs> iron. <Yeah>. <laughs> it works. Yeah. I was able to melt a bunch of aluminum mm. more than I had ever done before without even putting a top on there. So, I mean, mm. it's... And and the the furnace itself is made of the plaster that's like three years old and cracking and oh, yeah. you know, breathe on it it collapses yeah um, so yeah but I started doing that um, went over to a local foundry talked to them about how to make my castings not suck because mm. um, I figured they might have an idea yeah um, and then asked if they had internships and they're like yeah oh that's um, cool so, and what did you do while you were there so I did it's <laughs> a good question <laughs> um. I didn't have much engineering experience because it was like right after freshman year, mm. um, but they had me optimizing some some stuff in mm. the assembly, uh, in the the mold making process, mm. um, assembling the molds and saving sand and whatnot. Oh, that's so interesting. It was still interesting, and I got to play with fun stuff. And yeah, they had me carry one of the flasks of aluminum. They have these like I think twenty two hundred pound wow gla- uh, graphite clay oh, crucibles. Yeah, yeah. The huge ones? Um, yeah. The, like, like the crane? Uh-huh. Yeah? Um, and they're just filled with aluminum, and it's all glowing red. It's like 1,500 degrees or something. Um, and the pouring people just, like, take this pot about this big and just dip it in there and pull it out, and 
they make it look so easy, but it's like 70 pounds. And I was yeah. walking with it. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> this is <laughs> Don't spill oh, no, it. You yeah. will die. Don't drop it. It'll <laughs> spray everywhere. But, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it sounds fun. It sounds very dangerous. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they had these big 6,000-pound capacity furnaces. Wow. One of them tilts. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. On hydraulics. And so it pours into a transfer basin mm. uh, that's carried by forklift over to the other mm. thing. So. And so do they degas the aluminum? They do. Yeah. Um, they just bubble nitrogen through it. Yeah, that's a good... So yeah. so people ask me about this. I do not degas anything anymore because uh, in a professional setting like that, the aluminum is molten, exposed to the air for a long time, like all day. Continuously. Continuously. Yeah, so they, they shut it off. Yeah, so they got to keep <laughs> they gotta keep it degassed or their parts will have a problem. I melt it immediately in like three or four minutes and pour right away. Mm -hmm. So it's, it doesn't have a chance to absorb that much of the hydrogen out of the atmosphere. So it's not as big of an issue. I still get some porosity, uh, but I suspect a lot of that's my crappy ramming. <laughs> so like, and, and nothing that I make is for sale or structural or industrial. I'm literally just screwing around, mm. so like it's not it's not that critical anyway. And I don't dig. I got some chlorine, some of that pool chlorine, uh, anhydrous or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I could use that, but I also don't like chlorine gas. Like, yeah, that's, that's not. Uh, uh huh. And if it happens to react with the hydrogen under the high temperature, is just you know hydrochloric acid. Yeah, so, so it'll be fine. I don't. I don't feel like dying. <laughs> <laughs> not that way. Like if I'm gonna die from stupidity, it's gonna be something a little different. In fire. Yeah. Not with not with chlorine. not with like mustard gas or something. Anything else you're in into? How about video games? Do you play Kerbal Space Program? Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely. A lot or a little or? Um, not as often, but I've been with it for a long time. Yeah. Like the old before the before there was a map view. Oh like, yeah. You know back then. Yeah. Um. I think I started just before the the SLS parts. Okay. So yeah. there was a map view. Yeah. But it was still very early in development. Mm -hmm. And then I played it like it was a full-time job, probably <laughs> until 1.1. 1. 1. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of burned out of it. And then I, like, I had to get a life because like, I had a wife and a job. But then I started building stuff in here. I'm still working up to a spaceship. That, that, we got one part. Yeah, we got, yeah. We got part. Right? We got the handle for the hatch. <laughs> That's NASA approved even. 90% of the way there. Yep. Now I just need more fire mm -hmm. and hydrogen tanks. I think a uh, command module might fit in here. Yeah. Yeah. It could. I don't think we could get it out. <laughs> Minor <laughs> details. That's how you do sus successful space travel, right? Just worry about the details as yeah. the problems arise. Don't yeah. worry about them up front. Yeah. Never get off the ground. Yeah. Look at, look at SpaceX. Just launch it. Maybe it blows up. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll build well, another it works one. Works for them. <laughs> yeah, and then it then it works somehow. You're like, ah, we don't care if this blows up, and then it does like a perfect mission. <laughs> yeah. Crash Team Racing. Crash Team Racing. Yeah. Never heard of that one. That's like for the PlayStation One. Oh yeah. <laughs> Never heard of that. I do. Okay. I I tried some uh, some BeamNG Drive, Ooh, some Wreckfest. Yes. Like the newer the newer Crash ones. Mm. You might like. You can heard a game called Automation. Mm. It's still in development. It's, uh, you basically have to run a car company, including designing the cars. Oh. So you get to pick, like, you know, do you want monocoque? Do you want ladder chassis, double wishbone front? Right? You know, you pick all little details, build the whole engine, all nerd stuff, you know, bore stroke, what kind of metal you want the block to be, all this <laughs> stuff. And then you have to market it uh -huh. and, like, set up factories and, like, shifts. And, but you can build cars. And then, best part, you can export them to BeamNG Drive. Oh, uh, that that is yeah. actually the best part. That is, that is the best awesome. part. So you can build you can build a 900 horsepower minivan if you want, <laughs> and then try to drive them because no one's gonna buy them in the game because that's ridiculous. <laughs> Check that out if you're into engineering nerd stuff. Automation. It's on Steam. <laughs> Not a sponsor, although I do sort of <laughs> know the developer. <laughs> they should be. They already they already got my money. I already bought the game. If that game man, if that game was around when I was in middle school. I feel like we're rambling now. Maybe we should wrap this up. Do you have any closing words? Words of advice? Um, for, for children of all ages who are interested <laughs> in this kind of thing? <laughs> um, be safe, but also make stuff. Don't be too safe. That's what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> be safe, but don't let it get in your way. Exactly. Never let, <laughs> mm, never let school get in the way of your education. Yeah. Is a, is a thing that my parents taught me. Yeah. Um, 
Or what, what does Rick from Rick and Morty say? Don't do don't go to school. It's not a place for smart people. <laughs> go to school though. Actually do that. Do do go to school. It's it's useful. Yeah, well like none of my viewers are under eighteen according to analytics, so who cares? You're all out of school. <laughs> if you're not, go to a community college or something. Learn a trade. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, if you don't want to go to like a four year university, learn a tr- stupid alarm. I got five minutes left. Go away. Yeah, I went to college, and then I went to graduate school, and then I went to more graduate school, and now I work in a trade. I don't use my degrees at all. Yeah. At all for any of that. Uh, if I was really smart, though, I wouldn't have gone to graduate school. But hey, now you have more knowledge. Now, yeah, yeah. Knowledge. Knowledge. <laughs> yeah, maybe not too hard with it. <laughs> yeah, not too hard with, with my microphone here. So yeah. thank you for coming. We're going to go get some lunch and then probably uh, stack some bricks. See how that goes. I don't know how to sign off an interview. I have just now realized, speaking of uh, coming up with issues, solutions to issues <laughs> as they arise. So I'm just going to say goodbye. Best wishes. Best best wishes. <laughs> it's the holiday season. Happy, merry, whatever you Happy celebrate. Merry Christmas, Kwanzaa. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. We'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>